and welcome to episode 90 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in North West London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. I'm not currently posting at the moment, but I'll get back to it at some point. So for nostalgia's sake, I'll be linking to that and everything else I mention in this episode just down below. As always, I am aware that some people aren't able to use Ravelry, so where I can, I will be finding non-Ravelry links and I will be marking everything really clearly, Ravelry and non-Ravelry. I always forget to mention this, but I do have a Kofi account, which I will also be linking down below as well. And a massive, massive thank you to everybody who has bought me a coffee over the last few episodes. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. As always, I want to kick off the episode by saying a massive thank you. Thank you and welcome to any new viewers. I really appreciate you giving the podcast a shot. And to my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back every episode. And there have been 90 of them now. Today's tea is once again not tea. I am not particularly on brand at the moment, but hey, isn't that just what life is at the moment? Just done is better than perfect, as I always say. Um, this is actually a hot Ribena. Um, I don't know if you can hear. I'm a little bit gravelly, feeling a bit sniffly. Um, it's just my hay fever kicking in, and um, I'm just making myself feel a bit better with a hot Ribena. Oh, which I have made altogether too strong. Oh, dear. Now, while we're talking about off-brand, <laughs> um, I am here on schedule again um, because I... I'm trying to keep the momentum going with my schedule. Um, however, I very nearly did not uh, podcast today. It has been an extraordinarily busy week at work. Um, I have been completely exhausted, like more tired than usual. Um, I feel like I'm always talking about how tired I am at the moment, but aren't we all? Like we're living in the middle of a very, very difficult time. And though we are hopefully coming to the end of it, we are still in it and the anxiety of it ending is just as tiring as the anxiety of the unknown. Anyway, <laughs> um, I did not get much uh, knitting or crochet done this week at all, so heads up on that. Um, however, I do have another incredibly busy week ahead of me, so I knew if I left it to next weekend, I'd probably have about as much to show for it um, and would just be more tired. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to turn up and I'm going to show you that I've not had a particularly productive couple of weeks. And that's okay. That is absolutely fine. We are not machines for productivity. We're human beings. And with that being said, let's move on to see what I actually have done the past couple of weeks. And let's take a look at Whipped Up. you I did warn you that there would not be much to show um, in whipped up this week but as I said right at the top of the intro we are not uh, productivity machines we're human beings and sometimes we just don't make as much as we would like to for me um, most of the evenings this week I've just kind of collapsed after work and read a book or watched some YouTube or a film I haven't done a lot of making and my uh, meetings have been busy enough that I haven't been knitting through them. But I have done a little bit of knitting. This is um, a sock for my Christmas box of socks. I'm very excited about it. First of all, as always, it's in my Knitting Goddess uh, sock bag, which I love. And I'm just gonna drop that down there. And this is Peppermint Bark by Twisted Limone, which I got in a D stash. And the uh, contrast color that I have uh, made the cuff out of is a Lamington Lass Mini Go Berry Go, I think is correct. It'll be on the screen if it's not. But there we go, I've got the leg, I think, made of the sock. That is actually a full, I'm just co completely covering up, that's actually a full colour repeat. Oh, you, you wanna see the colour repeat? I mean, okay, there you go. Um, God, it's almost like I'm a professional, isn't it? Yeah, good job I'm not really, isn't it? <laughs> but this is Peppermint Bark by Twisted Limone, and it has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stripes. Uh, to the colour repeat. So we've got these two, I hope you can differentiate on the camera there, these two kind of minty greens, um, this uh, candy floss pink, uh, the red, two different shades of brown, 
And then this really lovely uh, speckled cream right at the bottom there, which is probably curling too much for you to see properly. Um, and I stopped there because I need to measure it because I think it's, I think it's about the right length for the leg of my socks. I need to just go and grab one of my socks and hold it up against it. Um, however, I want to put the heel in now and then start the, the next colour repeat going down the foot because I just think that would be really neat and tidy. <laughs> so that's probably what I will do this afternoon. I just need to bung the heel in really and then crack on with the rest of it and then that right there will be another Christmas sock. And I cannot tell you why this is Christmassy. I don't know. I think peppermint bark is something you have in America for Christmas, which I think is like chocolate with peppermint canes, like candy canes in. I don't know, I've never had it. Um, sounds delicious. It's a Christmassy treat, sounds delicious. Um, so I'm not really sure if these colours are indicative of peppermint bark. And I can't tell you why it's Christmassy, but it definitely feels Christmassy. I think it's the kind of cool tones um, here with the red and then this speckle is very definitely Christmassy. So it's not, it's not a traditional Christmas colourway, uh, at least not to me. <laughs> I don't know if this is a traditional American colourway, but it does read Christmas and I cannot put my finger on why at all. So yeah, I think it's really cute and it's lovely, lovely yarn to work with. Just really, really nice. So I think as soon as I finish this one and the second one, because come on, um, I will be going on to the other Twisted Limon that I have, which is Cactus Flower. And obviously the leftovers will be going into my advent bag. And then what is left over from that will be going to my friend for her scrap blanket. I did take another run at my Dreamcatcher cardigan by Sarah Ruan. So I nearly, bleh, I'm tripping over all of my words today. Sarah Ruan. Um, but I haven't got very far in it, but I will show you what I have done so far. And it's not much at all. Um, it's just, I've redone the kind of center. I haven't finished it yet. Um, I've redone the center of the back. Uh, this is in Nitpicks Will of the Andes in Heather ca Camel Heather, Heather Camel camel heathered camel camel it'll be on the you know the drill um and a really lovely commenter thank you so much told me that when you go from a circle to a square it will kind of curve slightly and then will gradually straighten out um thank you so much for telling me that because i've literally been unpicking it thinking that i'm doing it wrong but apparently I was doing it right the whole time. So there you go. I don't know if you can see it, if I hold up against something paler. Still very uncertain about this color, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I wish that I had gone for something a little more sandy or like taupe, but it's here now. We're gonna make the best of it, which doesn't sound terribly enthusiastic. I wonder if that's what's holding me back from getting on with it. I wonder if maybe I just contact nitpicks and organize a return. Because I've, I've said this before, I've got a little screen on the top of my camera um, so I can see kind of vaguely if I'm in frame and if the thing I'm holding up is in frame, um, but I don't have my glasses on so I can't really tell what I think of this. I just know that I wanted it to be more oatmeal, porridge. So I might contact Nick Picks. I'm almost certain that I am well out of the time period that I can organize a refund. And obviously I wouldn't be able to refund the ball that I've, I've started with, but I just think I made a mistake. I think I have got the wrong yarn for this project and possibly this is not a, a me yarn hmm it's something i have been it's been in the back of my mind for a couple of weeks to be honest with you and now that i'm chatting away about it maybe that is the problem okay tell me in the comments what you think i mean i'm I'm fairly certain this is not gonna work for me. <laughs> um, but what do I do with it? Oh, what do I do? 
it's just a bit too dark and I wouldn't wanted something a bit brighter. My own fault, I should have got like one or two balls and seen what it looked like beforehand. Thoughts, please? I was not actually expecting to talk about that. Like I said, I've been mulling it over in the back of my head and I've kind of gone, well, you've committed, Nikki. You've bought all this yarn. You need to make something out of it. But the more I look at it, the more I think, it's not a colour that I want to wear, um, even as a layering piece. And I've very strongly got the image in my head of what I want it to look like. And the colour is just not right. And if the pandemic has taught us anything, surely it is that if it's not right, don't do it. You know, life is too short to make things just because you bought them. So I think probably what I will do, I will contact Nitpicks and just see if I can organise a return for 99% of the yarn. Um, and if I can't, I might just try and de-stash it. I might resell it myself. Um, and to be honest, I was using completely the wrong size yarn for this project anyway. Um, if you hadn't seen the earlier episodes where I introduced this project, I wanted this year to crochet a garment. I'd come across um, a cardigan. I cannot remember the, t uh, the name of the pattern now. And based on that, I bought this amount of yarn in this weight, which is worsted weight. And then my friend uh, who's gotten into crochet, who I donate my scraps to for her scrappy blanket, um, sent me this one, this uh, kind of looser, um, kind of more shapeless, that sounds really horrible, but like much looser, much more chilled vibe cardigan with the kind of uh, design in the back. And I fell in love with it completely. And I thought, okay, well, I've got worsted and this pattern calls for bulky. I can probably just do more um, rounds on it and that'll make it big enough. But no, 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 no. If this is the pattern that I want to do and I'm not in love with this yarn, I need to go back to the drawing board. I need to get the correct yarn and I need to de-stash this yarn in some way or another. And there you have just seen me working through something that's been bothering me for about a month now. Probably longer to be fair. I think probably since I opened the box and was like, ah, oh. but thought, you know, I've shipped it all away from America, which is something I very rarely do. This is the first time I've bought nitpicks because I, I don't like to have things coming from so far away. Um, I can't send it back. That's just, that's really terrible. I shouldn't do that. But life is too short to waste it on projects that you're not completely in love with. So there we go. I think I've just been through the five stages of denial or whatever it was. <laughs> I've been denying it for like weeks on end and now I've gone through you know, bargaining and now I've reached acceptance and um, I've figured out a solution, which is new yarn. Next week is payday, so new yarn and do something about this yarn. It's just not a color that I love. All that I think would suit me, which is a real shame. But I've never used, you know, if I can't return it, I've never used the kind of de-stash feature on Ravelry, so yeah. Maybe I'll do that. So that's it for Whipped Up. Um, when I said I hadn't been particularly productive, I was not joking. Um, we have half of one sock and the burial of a particular project, um, I think is the best way to describe what happened there. Um, the crochet cardigan, Dreamcatcher cardigan, will be back once I have gone back to the drawing board. I've never actually made anything in bulky yarn, to my knowledge. I don't think I've ever owned bulky yarn. So, this is a good opportunity to find some new yarns. Maybe I can get it in like a cotton bulky, so it's a bit lighter for the summer, because I think wool was a poor idea anyway. Why did I, why did I think that wool was a great idea for a summer cardigan? I don't know. But you know what, I'm I'm glad I talked that through with you because I've been doing this since 2016. So five years now, coming up to five years. Um, and in that time, I have learned to make socks. I've completed a couple of garments um, and I've completed some pretty large projects that way back when I started uh, knitting and crocheting um, more seriously back in 2012, I would not have thought I could do. But, <laughs> I'm still learning. 
I'm still making silly mistakes, um, pairing the wrong pattern with the wrong yarn, um, you know, making silly choices about colours. It's all, you're always learning and that's kind of why this is a fantastic hobby. So, it's not the whipped up you may be wanted, but hopefully it's the whipped up that you needed. This is your permission slip, if you need one, to put down that project that you're meh about or figure out a different way of using some yarn that you spent a lot of money on but isn't quite working for what you thought it would. As I said, life's too short, so let's let's just work on projects we love. Why is that why does that feel like a thunderbolt moment for me? Like why that should be obvious. But yes, that is it for whipped up. It was a pretty snappy one this week. Um but we will be taking this very chaotic neutral energy over to Knit and Natter. Mm -hmm. episode I talked to you um, about my Marvel binge and I will be honest with you I've been feeling a little bit rudderless since I finished it because um, I, I think I mentioned this in earlier episodes that through the pandemic um, I didn't really uh, watch or read much um, because I was so kind of anxious and exhausted by what was happening in the world um, I didn't have the headspace to make a decision every night about what to watch or what to read. Um, and I started watching series. Um, so I worked my way through Vikings, Outlander, etc. Um, and I found that really easy because it meant I made one decision and it tided me over for like a few weeks, couple of months. Um, and I then applied that logic to reading. I didn't read for like six or seven months, but I got into series. And it meant that I could choose every couple of weeks what to read. And then I just read everything in that series. Um, and that's kind of what Marvel was. So um, on top of being quite tired out by work this week, I was, I was finishing work and going, I just want to sit and watch a film. And then being like, what, what film? I don't, what one? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking for another series of films to watch. I had hoped that The Hunger Games was on Netflix, but it isn't. And you have to pay for it on, App on Apple, on Amazon, uh, which is frustrating. So yeah, I'm looking for like a new series. I might actually start Pose again, because um, I only got a few episodes into that and then life kind of got in the way. So I think I'm gonna go back to series. It just makes life a lot easier. But speaking of series, and I did promise in the last episode, I would talk to you about some of the books that I have been reading. And mostly it's been fantasy because um, I find that fantasies tend to be in trilogies or longer, which is really, really good. And I love fantasy. I love magic and like sword fighting and like fantasy and sci-fi always has such higher stakes. So I love it. Um, I am a melodramatic drama queen and I love it. So yes, it has mostly been fantasy, but I will say that at the beginning of the year, having binged all of Bridgerton over Christmas, I did read all of the Bridgerton books and I am not sure that I would recommend them, to be perfectly honest. I think I got through a book a day um, because they're a really light, really easy read and to be honest, you know when you go back to work after Christmas, that re-entry can be quite difficult. Um, so they, they worked for me. However, there are eight books in the series and I kind of feel like I ran out of steam on them around book four or five because they are quite formulaic um, and the storylines do get a bit outlandish but also they feel quite samey. And they're based on the eight Bridgerton siblings, who if you've seen the series or if you've read any of the books, you will be familiar with. But not familiar enough, um, because they all work as standalones. I looked them up and I read them in order. Um, but there isn't much of a thread that runs between them, um, which is a real shame. And I actually think that the series has done a much, much better job with them than the books have done by um, bringing in elements to the first uh, series 
that I know are going to be explored in later series. So I thought that was really well done. So if you're looking for something um, really light to read, um, I will say it is a little bit, as we say on uh, BookTok, spicy. And at BookTok, if you don't know, I've gotten quite into TikTok. I do not post anything, I just watch it. Um, and that's where a lot of my recommendations have come from for various series. Um, and if they have some physical elements, shall we say, uh, because I'm aware that some people watch this with their children, um, they say that they're quite spicy. So that is what I will be using in this, just so we know. Um, so there are some spicy scenes in the Bridgerton books. Um, they're quite a light, easy read. As I say, I got through a book about every day, two days. Um, but they are very light, very, very fluffy. They're not anything you can really get your teeth into. Unlike a couple of the other series that I read. Um, so the two series that got me back into reading at the end of last year were two, so two, two series by Sarah J Maas. And the first one is A Court of Thorns and Roses, which I believe has been optioned for a TV show, which should be really fun. And the reason um, that I got into this is because of BookTok, so the book community on TikTok. I had read the first book, um, A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is a retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story, um, a couple, maybe three years ago. And I didn't read the next ones because I was a bit like, Mm, okay, not sure if I like the ending of that. Um, and I don't really know how much to go into spoilers here. I'm gonna try and keep it spoiler free. Um, so, cause otherwise only the people who will have read it will wanna watch this. So I'm gonna try and keep this spoiler free. Um, but I didn't really like the resolution at the end of that series. And I thought, I don't wanna watch that develop. Not interested. However, I then stumbled across a couple of minor spoilers on BookTok that said that it was going to go in a completely different direction. So I decided to reread it and then read the next ones in the series. And I really enjoyed it. Um, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I did enjoy it. And then I got the next one in the series. I'm trying to remember, there's um, A Court of Thorns and Roses. A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, Wings and Ruin, um, A Court of Frost and Starlight, and then A Court of Silver Flames, yes. So the fifth one came out in February this year. It is a lot spicier than previous books, so warning if that is not something that you're into, it is good spicy. And um, I really enjoyed it. It was about 700 pages and I finished it in about four days. <laughs> because I was just going to bed early and reading it and just really enjoying it because the beauty of a series is that there are characters you're familiar with, you're familiar with the world and it does have that comforting familiarity. So I really enjoyed that. However, my favourite Sarah J Maas series is the other one that I've read. I haven't read any of her other books, only these two series. And it's her Throne of Glass series. Um, Throne of Glass is fantastic. I read on a Kindle, so um, I really struggle with the names of books because I, it, when you when you turn the Kindle off, it just has random pictures of like pens and books and things. It doesn't have the cover, which I find really annoying. So I really struggle to keep the name of the book in my head. So I read the five main books in the series. Um, I did not read Tower of Dawn because I didn't like the character. <laughs> that it's about so I just skipped it and I did I personally don't feel like I missed anything I will probably come back and read it at a later point and I believe there is a collection of short stories called Assassin's Blade um that happened before the series that I also haven't read um so I think there are more to there's more to read but the main storyline um in Throne of Glass absolutely brilliant I loved it I devoured these stories I was just there like um, God, I got through them so quickly. It was unreal. I absolutely loved it and would heartily, heartily recommend Throne of Glass to 
anyone out there. I will give it a trigger warning though for violence, spice, there's a little bit of language in there. Um, there is, when I say violence, it can be a little bit, it, it's quite a lot in places. It's still considered young adult, or I think the new genre is new adult. It's nowhere near Game of Thrones levels, um, which I've also read. And I'm still waiting for the latest one, George R.R. R. Martin, if you could just get on that, please. Um, but it's nowhere near that level, um, but it is upper end, shall we say, of the kind of young adult, new adult genre. Um, but I heartily recommend it. I can't say anything more without giving too much away. The only thing I will say is that I did not like the ending. And that comment leads me quite neatly into uh, speaking about another series that I just finished, which is Shadow and Bone. Now, along with The World and Her Wife, I watched Shadow and Bone on Netflix recently. I really enjoyed it and I decided to read the books because um, I was aware that you had the Shadow and Bone trilogy and then you had the Six of Crows trilogy um, and they brought characters from both together to make the series. And I was just interested to see how it worked um, in the book without these people in it. So I went away and I have just finished the trilogy, uh, which is Shadow and Bone, Ruin and Rising. No, Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, Ruin and Rising. Again, I don't have the physical book. I read on my Kindle, so I really struggle with um, titles and getting them in the right order. I didn't enjoy it as much as um, a Throne of Glass or A Court of Thorns and Roses, but I really did enjoy it. And... The reason this leads quite neatly on from the end of Throne and Glass is that the ending is quite similar um, regarding what happens to the main protagonist. And I'm hoping anyone who has read it will know what I'm talking about. Um, but it, it felt right at the end of Shadow and Bone for me. It felt good. Uh, and it didn't feel so much like that at the end of Kingdom of Ash. Just saying. It's really hard to talk about books and stuff without giving away any spoilers. So, sorry if this doesn't make any sense, but hopefully it's intriguing enough that make you want to go and read it all. So yeah, those are the three big series that I've read over the past few months. Um, A Court of Thorns and a I can never say it. A Court of Thorns and Roses, um, Throne of Glass, and Shadow and Bone. I really enjoyed them, and I will definitely be reading more in the. I believe it's called the Grisha verse. Um, which Shadow and Bone is set in. I definitely want to read Six of Crows. Um, I do need to look this up because I know there's, I think it's King of Scars is next. I'm really excited um, to read more because they were actually my favourite characters in the show. And I believe some of the characters in Shadow of Bone that I really liked are going to be in that as well. So I'm excited to get into that. However, I'm taking a little break from the Grisha verse um, because yesterday I downloaded a new book. I haven't started it yet, um, but it is called A Touch of Darkness. I am just going to pull it up. I also have my Kindle app on my phone um, as well as my actual Kindle because that means that if I'm ever out and I don't have my Kindle on me or it runs out of battery, I can read uh, my books on here which is fantastic and I'm just looking at my library and I should also mention the Folk of the Air trilogy. I read this a couple of years ago but I decided to revisit it as I was clearly in some sort of fey, you know, I'm just in a fey place at the moment um, and that is The Cruel Prince, uh, The Wicked King and The Queen of Nothing uh, by Holly Black and I really enjoy that one too. There's lots of political scheming going on and I fell really, really hard for the romance in that trilogy. I really enjoy it. So Folk of the Air does have a special place in my heart. Um, but yes, the one that I have downloaded is A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair and it is... Uh, apparently a retelling of the Hades and Persephone myth and I heard about this on BookTok, so the book community on TikTok. And while I'm on the subject of Hades and Persephone, I've been reading for about a year now a webtoon comic. Webtoon, webtoon comic? What are words? Um, called Laura Olympus, which is really fun and beautifully illustrated, so I'll link to that as well. If you're a Hades and Persephone story junkie. 
Um, I haven't started A Touch of Darkness yet. I've heard good things, so I will be checking that out today at some point. It'll probably be my bedtime read. So for a podcast that claims to be about knitting and crochet in Northwest London, this episode has been very much brought to you by fantasy novels um, with a very heavy, heavy dose of the fae. Um, there is a real trend, it seems to me, in fantasy at the moment to have these um, fae worlds um, or in the case of the folk of the air, the fae kingdoms just out of reach of our normal world. Um, which is quite nice. There was a, I think there was a trend a few years ago for vampire stuff and I enjoy this kind of type of fantasy a lot more. I think probably because I watched Labyrinth at a very impressionable age and I just love it. But yeah, I would love to hear if you have read any of these books, if based off of that you know of any that you think I would like. I really love, um, a good enemies to lovers trope, I really do. I also love childhood friends to lovers, that's a good one. Um, lots of high fantasy, very high stakes. My Kindle wish list is unreal at the moment. It's just completely unreal. So there you go, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> um, but do leave your recommendations below if you know of any great fantasy stuff that you think I should check out. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on A Court of Thorns and Roses, Throne of Glass, Shadow and Bone. There we go. We are back on schedule. I'm showing up even when I've only got not even half a sock, let's be honest, to show you. Um, but there we go. I think have, getting back on schedule is good for me. Um, accepting the fact that I won't always have a wealth of content is good for me. Let's all remember Done is better than perfect and we are not productivity machines. We are people who sometimes just want to sleep and read strange fantasy novels. The heart wants what it wants, guys. Wants what it wants. But that's it for this week. I will be back in a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully my busy time at work will have um, finished. I will have a little bit more to show you. Um, I will maybe have an update on what I've done with this yarn that I've now come to terms with not actually wanting. Um, maybe I'll have an actual cup of tea instead of water or Ribena. Who knows? But in the meantime, thank you so much for, I mean, sitting through this chaos. I'm so sorry. It's made very little sense to me, so goodness knows what it's made to you. But I will see you very soon for another cup of tea. Take care.